Good day, people. Good day. Good day. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm doing great. So, today, we're discussing the narcissistic triangulation. Again, the narcissistic triangulation. Okay? When you think of a triangle, guys, huh? You could, I guess, say a figure like this, right? A triangle. Okay, we have three angles. That's why it's a triangle. All right, three corners and three angles. Okay, you have point A, point B, and point C. Okay, so now. How does this fit in with the narcissist or narcissism, guys? Hmm? Guys, the narcissistic triangulation is simply a tactic that's used by the narcissist to create more chaos and maintain control or power. Okay? I'll say that again. The narcissistic triangulation huh, is pretty much a tactic, another toxic way, dirty tactic that the narcissist use huh, to create chaos and maintain control or, and power, all right? Another way you could look at this is sort of like the hero and the villain all in one, okay? The hero and the villain all in one, okay? You take someone who creates a problem, huh? And then turns around and resolve that problem and ends up looking like the hero, okay? You create the problem in secret, of course, without people being aware, right? And then he'll emerge and solve that problem, right? In front of everybody. And now he looks like the hero, okay? So for the narcissistic triangulation to be effective, guys, it requires the narcissist, the victim, and the third individual who is usually a flying monkey, okay? Triangulation usually happens more within family dynamics, okay? Where the narcissistic parent will have different ways of treating the children within that family dynamic, okay? Again, the narcissistic parent will have different ways of treating the children within that family dynamic, right? You have the golden child, the scapegoat, huh? and the the ghost child or whatever. Pretty much, guys, the narcissistic parent huh, treating the children not as equals, but treating them all differently, okay? And what will this create? This will create some form of animosity amongst the children, okay? Because some of the children will begin to feel like they're not being treated fairly within the family dynamic, right? And so it will always create a messy situation, right? A chaotic situation where the children will begin to fight amongst themselves, okay? And what does this do, guys? This causes the narcissistic parent to be the hero because they always have to be the one to sit the children down, right? And counsel them, okay? Again, this will lead to the narcissistic parent becoming the hero because they'll be the one to intervene and sit the children down and counsel them to get along. Okay, so now you notice how they're the ones who created the problem and then they're the ones who solve the problem. Okay, like the hero and the villain situation I mentioned earlier. They're the ones who created the, pro the problem huh? and then they're the ones who resolve the problem looking at like the hero in the end, okay? 
Now, let's look at uh, in a romantic relationship, okay? In a romantic relationship, guys, it will, it will work something like this. The narcissist, the victim, and the new supply, all right? So now, we have three people, okay? The narcissist, in their attempts or in their, in their, in their scheme to discard the victim, okay? will begin to seek a new supply before they discard the victim okay because as we know the narcissist cannot go long without supply so before they discard the victim they will seek out new supply this will usually be someone that they're seeing on the side or cheating with or one of those situations huh? And if you ever catch them, uh, should the victim ever catch them and confront them, the narcissist will respond with something along the lines of, oh, but you was not there for me. You was not available for me. So I had to seek it elsewhere. Okay. So you understand the narcissist by saying something like this is in a way admitting, uh, admitting that they, they need supply. Okay. They need supply because what would the normal person do? Huh? They will reach out, right? They will sit down and, and talk with their person and say, hey, I need you to be there with me more or this, that, and the other, right? But in the narcissist case, they'll blatantly do it, right? And then when caught and confronted, they would say something along those lines. Oh, if you were available, I wouldn't have done that or you weren't available for me, so I had to seek it elsewhere, okay? So, let's understand that, right? But anyhow, guys, it works something like this, okay? When the victim, uh, which in most cases is an empath, right? When the victim starts to become aware of the narcissist's red flags, they'll begin to pull back some of their energy, right? We covered this previously, right? As they start to pull back some of their energy, the narcissist, the narcissist being the entitled fool that they are, is going to start to feel some type of way, right? When they realize that the empath is pulling back their energy or their resources or, or their supply, they're going to question the empath, right? So in this case, guys, they will seek out supply outside of the relationship, okay? They will seek supply outside of the relationship, all right? And what will happen is this. They will find a new supply, right? Okay? And then what? They will begin the love bombing and trauma bonding with the new supply, all right? But the way this works is that they're going to start a smear campaign, okay? A smear campaign against the victim, okay? The old supply or the person that's in the relationship with them currently, okay? They're going to start to smear that individual's name, okay? They're going to tell the new supply about how bad of a person this individual is and how they're not doing right by them and 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 how they're not treating them right and how they're this and how they're that and call them all the names in the book all right so this is called the smear campaign right and the idea uh, is to tarnish this individual's name okay again the idea is to tarnish this individual's name in front of the new supply right the narcissist has to make themselves look good in front of the new supply also huh the narcissist is causing the new supply to feel sorry for them to feel bad for them to feel like they should be there for them you understand the, the position here huh on one hand the narcissist is making their current partner look bad right in front of the new supply okay on the other hand, guys, they're causing that new supply to feel sorry for them, to want to be there for them more, okay? So what this will end up doing is this, all right? It will create uh, 
another love bombing, trauma bonding situation. Okay. And before the new supplier knows it, huh, they will be trauma bonded because what will end up happening is the narcissist will, will eventually, once they have the new supply where they want them, they will eventually discard their current partner, which will be the old supply, right? They will discard them and make the new supply the, the new full-time partner, okay? They will kind of promote them from the side piece to the main piece now, okay? This is where a lot of love bombing will take place and the trauma bonding process will repeat all over again, okay? So, in in essentially in romantic relationships, guys, the triangulation usually involves the narcissist, their partner, huh? and in most cases, a third individual whom the narcissist is cheating with, okay? In some rare cases, guys, it may, the third individual may be a, a member of the narcissist's family, maybe an in-law or, some, uh, or something, okay? Maybe an, an in-law, a, a sister or a cousin, but someone from the narcissist side of the family usually, okay? It will never be someone from the outside. And, and in some rare cases, it may be a friend of the couple, okay a friend of the couple all right but like i said these individuals are usually flying monkeys okay they're usually flying monkeys all right and the majority of the case guys is usually an individual that the narcissist is is, is sleeping with or creeping with or, or cheating with okay we looked at family dynamics we looked at romantic relationships now let's look at the uh, friend groups right friend group guys for the triangulation to be effective in a friend group right the narcissist will reach out to one of the friends right one of the mutual friends okay this is who the third individual will be a mutual friend okay so the narcissist will begin to smear one of the other friends to the mutual friend okay either way it requires a smear campaign because the idea is for the narcissist to paint huh to paint the other individual in a bad light okay who is usually their partner okay the idea is to paint them in a bad light okay so it usually requires a smear campaign Okay, and that's simply what a smear campaign is, is is the when the narcissist start to try to tarnish your name and your reputation, all right, by saying bad things about you know, painting you in a bad light, so to speak, telling people how much of a bad person you are, essentially. Okay. So now let's look at the, the friend group, okay? You find a group of three friends or four friends or whatever the case, okay. What will happen in this situation is that the narcissist, huh? Whoever that victim is, or whoever that friend is that, that they don't like, or they want to get rid of, they want to discard, or whatever the, 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 the situation, they will consult with the other friend, okay? Another mutual friend, okay? They will consult with them, huh? And then what? Begin to tarnish their reputation in the name of the other friend, okay? And the idea is to paint the other friend in the bad light, okay, to, to their mutual friend, all right? To make this friend look bad, uh, look like a bad person in front of the mutual friend, okay? So what usually ends up happening is there will be some kind of uh, separation this will lead to some kind of separation among the friend groups, okay? Maybe the narcissist don't want one friend to be a part of the group anymore for one reason or another. But this is how it usually happens, okay? In secret, the narcissist will consult with a mutual friend and pretty much this 
want no difference all right and what ends up happening here guys is when the friends meet okay when the friends meet everything will be okay all right everything will be perfectly okay on the surface okay but as soon as they separate guys the narcissist and the other friend who will be now the flying monkey they will consult and talk about the other friend all right so that's what triangulation is okay it's usually as like i said earlier involves the narcissist the victim and the third individual who is usually a flying monkey all right in the in the family dynamic huh it's usually the narcissistic parent creating chaos among the children in the family okay and then the children will begin to fight amongst themselves and the parent will emerge as the emerge as the hero who sits down the children and counsel them to get along okay so that's how it applies in the in the family dynamic all right now in a in a romantic setting okay it will be the narcissist huh their current partner and their new supply okay again it will be the narcissist the current partner and their new supply who is usually someone that they keeping on ice okay they keeping on the side and waiting to discard the current partner so they can move on uh love bomb and trauma bond this new supply and make them the, the full-time new partner okay now in the family uh, i mean um in the friend group right in the friend group is usually one narcissistic friend okay who would smear another friend to another mutual friend okay eventually end up huh having that one friend alienated from the friend group okay because it will create a situation where when they meet up and when they all get together everything is fine everything is a-okay and then the moment they, they they go their separate ways the the narcissist will go behind okay and smear the other partner's name the other friend's name tarnish their name to the other friends all right which will create a bad image in the other friend huh and eventually if it ever comes to the surface the friend will find out what happened or well, you know how he's being painted and then eventually they'll either discard themselves from the the friend group or it will lead to some form of a discard all right but anyhow guys the triangulation is just another messy tactic that the narcissist uses to create more chaos and maintain control uh, of the of 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 the people involved all right so guys I forgot to add this yesterday when I recorded the triangulation video. So here we go. The most effective counter, okay? The most effective counter against triangulation, guys, is to simply turn that triangle into a straight line, okay? Again, the most effective tactic to counter the triangulation, guys, is to simply turn that triangle into a straight line okay turn it from a b and c to a b okay simply dis disassociate yourself guys okay remove yourself from the situation entirely because at this point it has turned messy and there's really not much you can do to salvage it okay so the, the best thing you could do, guys, is to not play alone. Not play the narcissist game. Okay? Allow the narcissist and that new supply or whoever that, that third individual may be, allow them to have it. Okay? Allow them to, to be an A and B situation rather than A, B, C. Because all it's doing, guys, is psychologically messing with you. Okay? And you don't want that. All right, we have better things to 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 spend our mental energy on than to sit there and and let some narcissist toy with our mental energy. Okay, so 
Again, guys, the number one counter against triangulation is to simply turn that triangle into a straight line. Okay? So turn it from A, B, and C situation to A, B. All right? And how do you do this, guys? By exiting the whole situation. All right? By removing yourself from the situation. All right? Take yourself up. Okay? Have enough love and respect for yourself to walk away from that situation and allow the narcissist and their flying monkey or their new supply or whoever, whatever that situation may be, allow them to have it. Okay? So let me leave it here, guys. Until the next one, peace, love, and more life.